Um, I'm just going to wait 15 seconds, see if this gets online. Tell me if you guys uh, are seeing me. Oh, am I getting online? Yeah, okay, I'm online. <laughs> this is great. All right, thanks, everybody, for uh, showing up and uh, watching the stream. Um, sorry about the little delay. Um, okay, awesome. So this is a little, this is a really one of my favorite days to do um tournaments on FanDuel and DraftKings. And the reason is, is because on shorter slates, um, there's just a lot less hitters to choose from. And it plays into GPP strategy a lot because you'll get into situations where there will be a position where there's only one or two choices that really stand out. And if that's the case, then you're going to have hitters who are 40%, 50% used. And as you probably know, if you have uh, experience doing DFS baseball, is a lot of times, even with the best hitting choices, you can get into a situation where you think the guy is like perfect. His team has like a five and a half run projection, and he's a righty facing a lefty, and he's playing a course field, and everything's going on, and then he goes 0 for 4. Um, and that long fly out was six feet away from being a home run, but it ends up being a fly out. So. Um, when there's a situation in GPPs where there's going to be a hitter who's going to be really highly owned, I usually lean towards fading him. And so I'm going to try to identify who those guys are. And actually, if you want your, um, I would love to have your input as I'm doing this. So please, in the chat box, tell me about guys that you think are going to be highly owned. And that's going to help me out a lot, uh, figure things out. So... Cat, the two positions that are usually the weakest are catcher and shortstop. And I'm going to get into DraftKings as well. But I like starting on FanDuel just because um, it, it's a little more clear since uh, players don't play multiple positions. Um, so one thing I do is, first of all, we're going to, we're going to look at uh, the, high, the teams in general that are going to be targeted. So what I'm seeing right here is... Um, and I'm on fantasylabs.com. I, I really like their lineup and runs page because uh, their run lines, I, I find, are the, some of the most accurate. Um, so just taking a look, I'm seeing the Orioles, 4.3. They have some cheap guys. Uh, the Red Sox, obviously, I think have the highest run projection of the day. Um, with 5.1 runs, we got... The Yankees and the Rangers. Rangers is a great hitter's park. And then we also have the Cardinals um, with 4.3. And uh, the Giants might, we could see something in there, but they're not facing a lefty, so we're not going to see guys like Posey and, and Pence heavily targeted. So if we're looking at catcher, I'm just going to now narrow it down from the choices. So we have Matt Wieters. So right now I'm looking at drafting salary. Let's go to Fandle. He's only 2.3K, um, and he's going against a lefty. He's a switch hitter who actually um, does better against left-handers. And so I think a lot of these, a lot of DFSers are going to be really licking their lips at this matchup, especially at this price. Um, but let's look at other catching options. Flowers, bottom of the order. I don't think he's going to be used. Uh, Hannigan as well, bottom of the order, is not going to be used. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay, if we go to the Rangers, we have Brian McCann. is going up against a lefty, so that's not that helpful. Um, Chirinos is at the bottom of the order. McHenry's at the bottom of the order. Schwarber, obviously, is a popular play, but he's going against a lefty who does very well against lefties. So someone mentioned that uh, Weeders is day-to-day. -day. He is confirmed playing, so I, I that's something that you just should not take into consideration. And then we have Yachty or Molina, who really, I don't think, has been doing very well lately. So, yeah, he's had some big games, but uh, I don't think he'll be heavily targeted. He, he might uh, get a little burn. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm really, aside in Posey, maybe. Um, and given how, I'm just trying to think here, because I would assume that the highest-use pitcher is probably going to be Lance Lynn. He's just the, the best pitcher 
Uh, maybe I could see Heston at 7,600 because I'm pretty sure on DraftKings he's way, yeah, he's way more expensive. So I think Lance Lynn on Fandle is going to be most used. So if we just, that gives us 3,200 to spend on every player. So if we don't have money to spend and we could, you know, go Goldschmidt, we could go, um, Nelson Cruz, Brantley, we still have a lot of money spent. So I think Posey will get some ownership, um, but it really looks like Matt Wieters is going to get the majority of the ownership, especially at that price point, because, you know, why would you not play him? And uh, someone mentioned that Wieters saying day-to-day on DraftKings that people may avoid him. I, I just disagree. I think that the normal people are playing D- Daily Fantasy are savvy enough where I just don't think they take that into consideration, especially when there's just no one who stands out. So... This is a perfect example of a play on a short state like this that you can fade because Weeders is going to get 50, you know, 60% ownership and maybe even more. I, I'm not really sure. It depends on the GPP. Usually in the higher stakes GPPs, the players recognize this a little more and, and tend to avoid, um, avoid uh, using a using weeder overusing weeders but maybe even the low stakes you could see that a lot so i think that he's a good candidate for a fade um now the other question is is uh who should you fade him for so what i would say probably is i think your best bet is buster posey and for two reasons is one is posey has the upside um where you avoid weeders and you can really make people who are stacking weeders pay because weeders could have a negative point game, one point game or like a one point game or a zero point game. And Posey could have a game where he hits a home run, has a big game. And now you have something, a person that um, is really killing the people who decided to go with weeders like everyone else. And I think that this also sort of encourages a San Francisco stack. Um, because, I mean, obviously they don't have the highest run projection, but they do have a pretty good one, and Kyle Lush is, is not a very good pitcher. And so to sort of, you know, um, take full advantage of this Weeders fade, you might want to make a lineup where you're using Posey, use Pagan, use uh, Brandon Belt, and maybe uh, Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence, like, that's a pretty, even ready on ready, that's a pretty good price, especially for that projection. And so what you're really doing here is you're saying you're really just maximizing the Weeders fade. And, you know, Giant Stack does well. It means that A, Posey does well. And so if Weeders has a bad game, you already have that edge. And you're also just adding more correlation here by going with belt, begun, and pants. I'm not saying to just, like, go a lot on giant stacks. And, you know, I'm not saying totally fade weeders, because this is not totally reliable. I, I'm not positive of this. I'm guessing that he's going to get um, 40 50% ownership, but he could get less, he could get more. I'm not really sure. But you'll probably see me, especially on FanDuel, take advantage of this... Uh, uh, Posey giant stack a little bit. Um, and on DraftKings, actually, if we look at the salaries for catchers, well, Weeders is 2.6. That's an even better price. Um, and, oh, you know what, actually? So here's actually for DraftKings, I think I really like AJ Przinsky as a as a Weeders fade. So Przinsky is sort of in the same price range as Weeders. Um, and... He has a really, really good um, uh, park uh, matchup because he's going at uh, the Brace Park is uh, a really big pitcher's park, but the Orioles Park is a really good hitter's park, and it's especially good for lefties. Um, and so when you have a lefty who's a pretty good hitter in Pazinski, I mean, he's not great, but he's good, hitting in the middle of the order. And, you know, Kevin Gossman, he's a good pitcher, and the Braves are not supposed to score that much, but he's not that good. And it actually sort of plays into as well 
um, something that I've seen is Kevin Gaussman's price is ridiculous. It's 4300 which is just way too low for this matchup in a pitcher of this caliber. So I think he's going to be used a lot. And so what you can do on DraftKings in terms of the sort of catching fade of Weeders plus um, uh, sort of making a more GPP maximization lineup is you can use Przinsky, fade Gosman, and use you know, lineups that's just like Heston and Lynn or something. And you still have plenty of money to spare, and you'd make probably a very good lineup. Um, I wouldn't net well, I wouldn't necessarily recommend an Atlanta stack, but but they do have Freddie Freeman back. Pretty sure if you go on Daily Fantasy Winners, we have our pitch type matchups. And uh, um Mabin does have a pitch type matchup, so he seems like he has no history against Gaussman, but he could be in for a good day. Markakis, I mean, we got the revenge game factor. I really actually don't think that matters, but his price is really good, and he's going to be a much better hitter at Camden Yards than Atlanta. Freddie Freeman's a great hitter. Stack these four guys, avoid Gossman. I think that's a really, really nice play, and I think he'll have like quite a bit of money left over as well. So we have Maven. Yeah, everyone here is really, really fairly priced. So, and you know, on DraftKings today, there's a 250k super knuckleball that has a huge, huge first place prize, 100k for first. Like all the money is up top. So you really want to be taking risk here, risks here, and be making a lineup that is going to differentiate a lot from the field. So. You know, actually, I'm sort of warming up to this idea of, of doing a Brave stack that avoids Gaussman and sort of uh, seeing what happened. I, I don't know who this guy, Adonis Garcia, is, but um, I I definitely could be into this Brave stack. So I'm just going to look at the chat a little bit. Um, someone asked, what is the website I'm using? I'm using fantasylabs.com just to look at lineups and run lines. Um Thoughts on JSO leading off. I think that he's not... Uh, it looks like he's actually well-priced on drafting. So he's another option. See, this is why I'm sort of unsure, and thank you for that input, because I'm not totally sure about Weider's ownership. You know, I see this good price, and I think he's going to be the most used catcher. But I think people could use JSO, people could use Brzezinski... Uh, people could use Jan Gum, so he, although he's towards the bottom of the water, so I sort of doubt it. So I think that um, I think that you know avoiding weeders probably is the right play. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so also Danny, my twin brother, his name is Mertner on the chat. He added ISO splits to pitcher splits, so this is something on the forum. So this is something really cool. Um, um, so we already have pitcher splits that we do when we, we look at both um, FIP, which is more of like a, there's, there's sort of two ways of evaluating splits. So there's WOBA, which is basically the same thing as OPS, like on base plus slugging percentage. And then there's FIP, which is basically just a measure of, of how often a pitcher strikes out uh, a certain uh, handedness, how much they walk them and I think how many home runs they allow. So um, one thing that's cool is that I, I feel like I didn't describe that very well, but um, what Danny did is add, added ISO splits. So what this means is how much power people are hitting for against a specific player. So for example, Cody Anderson and the Indians. Now we don't have a huge sample, so I'm not going to rely on this, but this is indicating that lefties really hit for power well against him. Um, Risel Iglesias, also not a huge sample, but this indicates righties hit for a good amount of power. Uh, it looks like there's not a lot of people with such high splits. Well, I mean, point for Chris Heston, 0. 0.058 or Lance Lynn, that's, that's a pretty big ISO split, but, uh, say so Alex Wood as well, 0. 0.048. Um, but this is something where if you're trying to target home run hitters, um, this is a good way to look at it because... You can really see, okay, are lefties hitting this guy well because they're just hitting for average well, or are they hitting for power? And then you can uh, react accordingly. 
Um, yeah, someone did mention Freeman is back. I think this line is a little weird, honestly. I don't get why the Braves are are projected to score 3.2 runs. They're a pretty a team with some pretty good lefties. And I'm an Orioles fan. Galsman is good. He doesn't really strike that many people out, though. He's, he's just not that good. So I don't see why I'd be resistant to stacking a team like the Braves. Um... So uh, let's just move on to other positions. So now, like I said, catcher is one of the positions that's really barren. Shortstop is another position. So let's just look at this really fast. Um, if we have, or I guess what I just want to add one more thing is I would say that if you're making a stack, that I would favor using the catcher on the team in that stack and avoiding using leaders. So like, let's say you do a Boston stack. I would recommend maybe using a guy like Ryan Hannigan because if Boston does well, that just really exponentially increases the chances that Hannigan does well as well. And uh, uh, in games where the Red Sox score a lot of runs, um, Hannigan is going to outperform leaders a lot of the time. So uh, even though he's the bottom order, I think that he could be maybe your sixth guy in a Red Sox stack or... Same with Jaso or Avila. I mean, I would, I actually would not recommend stacking the Tigers at all. But uh, Jan Gomes, if you're stacking the Indians, uh, I really like Michael Brantley today, so I don't mind that as a stack. Or Chirinos, McCann, even though he's facing a lefty, he's not going to be facing a lefty the whole game. He's gonna, uh, uh, he's gonna be facing a lefty for a portion of the game because. Um, Matt, but Matt Harrison's not a very good pitcher, so he's going to be in for max four or five innings. So using a guy like McCann, maybe, um, Molina, if you're stacking Cardinals, et cetera, et cetera, maybe. Hmm, I mean, Zanina's at the way bottom of the order, but yeah, you could use him as well. Um, and then Posey, obviously, if you do a giant stack. Um, so now I'm going to look at shortstop as well. So uh, I'll get into other things a little later, but I, I just really want to talk about just um, position fading for this specific stream. So um, what I'm just seeing right here is, again, so I think the most stacked teams are going to be the Red Sox, the Orioles, uh, the Rangers, the Yankees, uh, maybe the Cubs and the Cardinals. So if we look at this right now, I think that it looks like Xander Bogarts has a real good price and his team has such a high run projection. I think he's someone who's... Oh, and he's facing a lefty. So everyone loves those lefty versus right matchups. So I think Bogarts is going to be someone who's going to be really highly on. And on DraftKings especially, where he plays two positions, it's going to be... He's going to uh, be used a lot because you'd place him in as a third baseman or shortstop. Um Let's see here as well. Also, Hanley Ramirez uh, on DraftKings. He plays shortstop and outfield. I think you're going to see him used a ton. Um, I could see Hardy being used a decent amount, but not anything worth fading. But he's a good play against the lefty. Um, let's see here. Mm, I could see Lindor used. I actually think Lindor is a, a good play. But um, I don't think he'll be that highly used because he just is not really coming off any great games here. Um, but uh, Edison Volquez is bad against base stealers, so I could definitely see him as a guy that uh, could have a big game stealing a base and maybe knocking, like, basically just singling twice and stealing a base, and you could have five fantasy points on FanDuel or 12 on DraftKings. Um... Sterling Castro is really struggling. I doubt we see him. Tulo is struggling, not at uh, Coors Field, so I don't see him being used. Don't really see Andrews being used towards the bottom of order, or or DD Gregorius. I could see Johnny Peralta being used um, a little bit, and I think that if you guys have any other ideas of, yeah, someone mentioned that they think Hanley's going to be really highly owned. I really agree. Um, especially on DraftKings where you can play shortstop, which is already a really barren position. So if I were to guess on FanDuel, I'm going to say Bogarts, 
it's going to be like the weeders of this position. He's going to be 40%, 50% owned, maybe even higher. Um, and so I think there are other pretty quality op options with J.J. Hardy, Francisco Lindor, uh, Johnny Peralta. And I think they're, you know, they're not as good as Bogarts, but they're quality options. Um, maybe use Andrelton Simmons if you're, well, that would be more of a DraftKings thing if you're going for the Weeders fade. But um, I would say that if you're going to choose to fade Bogarts, definitely do it in a non-Boston stack because basically Bogarts is production. He's not really a huge power hitter. He does hit for average, so he's either going to have a big game because Boston as a team is going to score five or six runs, or he's not because Boston's going to score... 0, 1, 2, or 3 runs, um, which is definitely in play. So use a guy like Hardy, use a guy like Lindor, use a guy like Peralta, and I think that could pay off big if you uh, are going for the Bogarts fade. Um, which actually, so now that I'm seeing this, how this, uh, uh, someone mentioned Brandon Crawford. I don't think he's going to be that highly owned. He's uh, we don't have the lineup yet, so I don't know. If he's seventh in the order, though, people just don't like to use people who are that low in the order. And DraftKings price is not good. Uh, Fandle price isn't good either, so I he's not going to be owned at all. And I don't know, he's not that great of a hitter. I don't I don't love using him. But um, now that I'm looking at shortstop, and you know I'm pointing to Lindor, um, and the fact that I also um, basically, the two things as I'm saying is there's a guy in Boston that's going to be really heavily used that I kind of want to fade for the sake of GPPs, um, and that's Bogarts and Hanley as shortstops. And then there's a catcher on the Orioles that I also want to fade because of uh, because of his high ownership in GPPs. And so, given that I think Lindor is kind of a cool option, um. And I also really like Michael Brantley because if you go to Daily Fantasy Winners Forum, and again, you just if you go to dailyfantasywinners.com, which is uh, my strategy site, and just click on the forum, you can just see this all for free. But Michael Brantley has a really good pitch type matchup. I think it's that I don't exactly remember. I think it's that he had four seams and curveballs really well. But I did this last night with uh, Nick, so I'm not sure. Also is a stolen base matchup, and he has two stolen bases already. Um, so not only does he have a pitch type matchup, he has that stolen base matchup against Edison Folquez, and he has the history that back it up. So I like Brantley as well. Um, and I really don't think the Indians, I mean, their run projection isn't that high, but they do have quality lefties that could really kill Volquez. Um and pretty reasonable prices. So we have, uh, I mean, Brantley's not a good price, but I do like him a lot. Uh, if we have Kipnis, not really a good price. Luckily today, though, like I said, um, there's not really elite pitchers, and you can use Gaussman. So if you if you go Lynn and, and Gaussman, you still have four. I mean, this is just ridiculous. You have 4,300 you could use. Uh, Brandon Moss is 3,400. Now I have a ton. I mean, you can really, you can go Posey here, uh, and then you just legitimately use, like, Nelson Cruz and Hunter Pence, and then you have, like, a really sweet lineup. And so if Cleveland has a big game, it's a very, very affordable stack. Um, and, you know, I think this is going to be a really underused stack because on paper... You know, three point. This isn't a high over under. They don't have like a great matchup. The Indians' offense has been awful. I mean, absolutely awful in the past few days. So, I think this is going to be a. This is like sort of my my stack of the day in terms of GPPs. You play the Indians. It's a very risky move, but especially in a tournament like the knuckleball where you you want to make risky moves. I think this could pay off really big time. And actually, all these guys as well. So Edison Volquez, so if you look at uh, Daily Fantasy winners, you go to RSB Pitchers. So RSB is just a measure of 
an independent measure of how good someone is at holding base runners. So if you go to Volquez, negative four, not a very good number. He's just not that great against uh, holding base runners. So people like Kipnis, Lindor, Brantley all steal bases. Carlos Santana steals a few bases as well. Um, I went, I'm not in love with just using Michael Bourne here just because he's not a very good hitter. But you can use a lineup that's basically these top five guys, excluding Murphy, who, who has a little bit of a pinch of hit, hit risk here. But I, he's a good choice as well if you want to use him. So I think this is a kind of a, a quality stack option for sure. Uh, I'm going to go to the chat again. Um, someone asked, do you find yourself not using all of the salary or do you feel like that is bad strategy? Um, I'd say on short slate, I usually find myself using all the salary um, within about $500. But I would say that on short slates like this, it actually it could be a good move, especially when you're talking about a tournament like the Knuckleball, to uh, actually not use all your salary because... For example, there's just some players who I think will have lower salaries and actually be better options than their higher salary counterpart. For example, like J.D. Martinez. Okay, he's His team doesn't have a higher run projection. I don't like him a lot. I would rather use someone like, I mean, even like Jorge Soler. Okay, so if, if we had our entire lineup filled and I had to choose between Martinez and Solar, I'd use Solar, but it, I'd still have $900 left on the table, or Moss, for example. So I think there are some situations, especially on short slates, where your options are so limited that it actually is probably a decent move to, uh, to you know, leave some money on the table. I think it's fine. Uh, someone is saying that Brandon Crawford leads the league in RBI. So, okay, um... Uh, I think that's what he, Yeah, he's talking about Crawford. So, you know, our, I don't even know who has RBIs, or I, I don't know anyone's stats, really, I in terms of RBIs or actual home runs. I'm just looking... What I look at is I just look at Steamer, and I look at their projection in terms of, um, you know, what they think a hitter is going to do. And, you know, you could say that maybe you are a better value of talent than Steamer, but I just don't believe I am because these guys have been doing this for years and years and years. So Steamer or you trust Zips, they both say about 720 OPS. That's not like, or if Steamer, you trust Steamer, 686 OPS. So that's just not that good in my opinion. I get that he has 14 home runs this season, but I just don't believe that is real. I mean, people can get lucky. There's a bunch of people who've gotten very lucky this season, and there's a bunch of people who've gotten very unlucky this season, and I'm just not buying into the fact that Bren Crawford has some sort of power surge for absolutely no reason. And, I mean, Steamer is basically saying he hits five home runs in his last 56 games, so that's 15 over a whole season. So they're only really projecting him as having, like, six lucky home runs. So... I know he at at thir I mean his price is what thirty one hundred on Fandle and he's batting seventh. That just isn't that good to me. Uh, someone mentioned Davy Dave Murphy batting cleanup two point six K on DK. He's definitely a good play. He's a guy who's platooned, um, which means that if a lefty comes in, he usually gets pinch hit for. So I don't love that play. Um. Someone asked, Max, when you fade a player, do you totally keep them off your GPP lineups or just low percentages? It depends how confident I am um, in the fade. But basically, um, for example, with, with Boston, like I'm suggesting possibly fading Bogarts and Hanley. So I might not fade them completely, but I'm definitely going to fade them when I'm not using a Boston stack. So let's say I'm stacking the Rangers, which is a great stack. They have a bunch of really good lefties against Ivan Nova, who's not a very good player. I'm going to make sure that I'm not using any Boston guys um, because I'm going to be using Andrews uh, as my shortstop. He has pretty good price. Um, and I just, I'm just going to 
I'm going to make sure that when I'm not using Boston stack, I'm going to fade these guys. But if I do use a Boston stack, I'm not going to just leave out Bogarts and Hanley Ramirez. They're two of their best players. And on paper, with that, this 5.1 run projection, they really are one of the best stacks um, of the night. So um, I'm not going to totally fade them, but I certainly am when I'm stacking another team. Um, the Royal, uh, Danny just said the Royals only have one lefty reliever. So that's good to know. So that means that maybe we don't have to worry about David Murphy, um, getting pinch hit for as much, even though he's sandwiched between a ton of lefties. Um, someone asked out of Carnes, Volquez, and Hendricks, who is your most preferred on DK? Uh, so we're just going to look at prices here. Um, Volquez is 8,600 on the road. I'm and Carnes also is, has a very high price. Hendricks, they're all about in the same price range. So I'm just going to look at uh, Fandel here. So Carnes, so Volquez is about the same price. Carnes and Hendricks are a little cheaper. Um, I would say that probably my favorite guy is Hendricks. I think he's, I would say that probably all of these guys are about the same. Um... I mean, honestly, Hendricks might even be the best. And the Rockies line up away from the cores. They are not a very good hitting team. So this is a pretty good matchup for Hendricks. Volquez is on the road. I know Cleveland's struggling, but I just don't. I think they're unlucky. Carnes, Detroit, it doesn't have a high run projection, but they are a good lineup. I, I don't love him. So I think Hendricks for sure. Um... Okay, let's just... Uh, I just have a five more minutes here, so maybe... Let's look at second base, which is also a position that can be pretty barren. So, um, hmm. so again, we're going to look at the teams that have really high run projections. So we got the Orioles. They actually don't even have, I mean, their second base is Jonathan Scope, who, who is batting eighth and has a left and right matchup. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him get some burn. Um... Pedroia's injured, so the Red Sox don't even have a second baseman. Oh, Jam Jamil Weeks, but he's way at the bottom of the order. Um, I think Kipnis gets a little usage, but his price is really high. Odor's price is ridiculous, so I, I don't know if he's going to get much usage. Uh, Yankees don't even have a second baseman. Uh, or, I mean, for daily fantasy versus Addison Russell's ninth. Colton Wong, here we go. He is going to be used a lot. Um, his price is really, really, really good. Um, he's facing a righty uh, for 2900 Let's check his DraftKings price, too. So Colton Wong, he's 4000 up there. So I would say on, on Fandle, he's going to be used a lot more, but he's also a much better play because of his price. I'm trying to think of of who might be a good fade. I think that Scoop could be an interesting fade. He definitely has some power and has that left and right matchup. Could be at the bottom of the order, but he uh, it's a team with a high run projection, and I am i sort of don't mind guys at the bottom of the order as much as other people. Um, and I think Kip, Kipnis, again... <laughs> It's funny, it seems like uh, this is just one reason I really like this um, Indian stack, is it seems like a lot of these players are just uh, perfect fades for um, for uh, the most popular plays. And uh, so I, I think I'm really into this Cleveland stack. Uh, someone asked thoughts on Delarosa and Alex Wood. Uh, I don't like Delarosa. I think the Cubs have quite a few good righties. And uh, don't love his price either. Um, Alex Wood. I don't think that's a bad play, honestly. Uh, priced really reasonably. The Orioles can be a high strikeout lineup. Um, it looks like right now they have Chris Davis batting second. Really high strikeout. Um, I'm not sure about Reimold. I'm going to check that out. Uh, one actually really cool way to evaluate lineups, and this is only for premium members, but you can try premium on Daily Fantasy Winners for free. 
uh, for a week if you haven't signed up already. But if you do uh, MLB pitcher matchup score, so this is a thing that my brother Danny created um, that basically takes into account um, how many pitches the player takes and how often he strikes out. Um, so basically, it's just a way of evaluating if this hitter is good for the pitcher or bad. So I'm going to look up Grimald. So he's actually really high up there. His rank is 95 out of, I think, a lot, 600. So him being at the top of the order is positive. Um, Chris Davis being at the top of the order is positive. This really is not that bad of a matchup. And again, this plays really perfectly to that Gaussman fit because I really think Gaussman is going to be pretty high used. And yeah, I think that... Uh, Wood seems like a pretty decent play, especially if you're going with that Brave stack too, because then you have that correlation. Well, that's probably a better thing on FanDuel. So the win is is much more important on FanDuel than uh, than DraftKings, and Wood's price is even worse on FanDuel, so it might not be used. But use a Brave stack with Alex Wood, and then the Braves offense goes off. It means Wood stays in the game longer, more in line for the win. So I don't think he's a bad play. Um, someone asked thoughts on a white so sock stack. They seem good. I think the, I mean, it's good hitters park. They have some pretty solid righties. I, I don't see why not. Uh, Robbie Ray. I think Robbie Ray's good. He's on the road, but the Mariners are not a very good hitting team, especially against lefties. Although they do, they have added Franklin Gutierrez is back from injury and Mark Trumbo. So... He seems like a de decent play. I think Ray, I was reading this article on Fangrass about Robbie Ray uh, by a writer I really respect, and they were writing very good things about the change in his delivery, and he actually seems like a pretty legit pitcher. Um, I don't know much about Mike Montgomery, so someone mentioned Trumbo Revenge Game. So, yes. <laughs> I mean, I joke, that, like, obviously that doesn't matter that much, but it is fun to do that. I mean, you could use Marcakis as an Orioles revenge game, Trumbo, just put him in, see what happens. Um, oh, it looks like this Rangers-Yankees over-under went up a bit, so these are going to be popular stacks as well, and, you know, I don't mind. There's some really great lefties. I really don't like the fact that Odor's price is so ridiculous on FanDuel, but on DraftKings he's recently priced... Chu's reasonably priced, Fielder is, Moreland is. Beltre is injured, so watch out. But So I, I really wouldn't mind using a Ranger stack where you're using the top seven guys minus Beltre. Um, I think that would be quite a good stack, and I, I definitely would not be using Weeders as a catcher if you're going to do that. So, uh, so like I said, uh, we got Hamilton, we got Chu... We got Andrews, we got Prince Fielder, we have uh, Rugned Odor, and then who's this other guy I was recommending? Oh, Mitch Moreland. If you can even play him, you might. Yeah, we actually can't play him. All right, so you need to use these five guys. You, I think Leonis Martin. Leonis Martin is in the lineup as well. Seems like a decent option. So if you wanted to go six, but then. You know, it's easy to go Lynn and, let's say, Alex Wood. And then you have plenty of money to spend. You can use Brian McCann. You can use, uh, man, we can't use Manny Machado. Chris Bryant, great play for GPPs because since he's a uh, high, uh, basically a boomer bust hitter. And then you have 3900 to spend on Dexter Feller. And then you have the, the Cub Synergy. You have... Five Rangers, and then you have a guy who's probably not going to be highly used because of that left-on-left -left matchup. You have a pretty good lineup. So uh, let's just answer. Someone said Moreland greater than Fielder. I just completely disagree. Fielder's a way better hitter. Um, and is Lynn the clear-cut top option? I think he is. Um, but he's also going to be the highest used. So um, it's tough to say. I guess Heston will get, on Fandle as well, will get some ownership. As, but my guess is Lynn will probably have the highest ownership. Uh, his price is high on DraftKings, but the thing is is that there's just not many hitters to pay up for. So 
and to the other quality option is Heston, who it also is overpriced in my opinion. Annabelle Sanchez is an option, but not a great one. I don't know. I I, uh, I don't see. I mean, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be using Lynn a lot. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. Someone just asked this has to never press on DK, so I said yes. So, um, all right, I'm gonna start getting to work now. But uh, thanks everyone for coming, and I'm gonna try to start doing this a couple times a week. Um, and it's gonna stay free. For I have no plans of make making this a pay to watch thing but I do encourage you if you like the stream um, please if you haven't signed up for DraftKings click on the affiliate link below to sign up through us or point please join us on the Daily Fantasy Winners forums or point your friends over to us if they haven't signed up for Daily Fantasy to sign up through us it's really a help and it, it encourages me to do the stream more often and and really uh, put my all into it. So I really appreciate you guys watching and, uh, you know, again, join us on the forums if you have any further questions.